There's the San Luis Obispo Coastal AVA that just was approved earlier this year and it kind of encompasses all of the coastal region of our county and it um, really ocean inf influenced um, area as you're experiencing here today. Sort of a normal weather pattern for our area to have fog and cool temperatures overnight and then um, clear and, and become dry and warm during the afternoons. Sure. And that's perfect for Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, some of these cool climate uh, grape varieties that thrive here. Pinot Noir and Chardonnay are all in, fermented for the most part, and tucked away in barrel, but we still have Syrah, Grenache, and Mauved out on the vine that will we'll start to bring that in starting on Monday morning. I think we have a, another three to five weeks ahead of us of pretty active winemaking. We um, do also a fair amount of winemaking for client wineries, and so they, we, you almost never know when your last day of fruit is gonna be in that, in that kind of an instance. We'll go from uh, August, September, it can be um, quite warm. We've even had 100 degree days here in the Edna Valley, um, which was a bit challenging, but it will get you know, shorter days as, the, as we get further into the fall. We'll have um, cooler overnight temperatures and toward the end, we'll, we'll abandon harvesting at night and just go in during the daytime um, when we can still bring the fruit in nice and cool. Yeah, we are. So Pinot Noir and Chardonnay are just the, the workhorses kind of here in the Edna Valley. The Edna Valley used to be um, planted almost like two thirds or more to Chardonnay. It's hard to grow bad Chardonnay anywhere in this valley. It just is really, really suited for it. Um, and then Pinot Noir kind of follows wherever Chardonnay does well. Um, but we have, besides being a really cool climate area, we have a pretty moderate um, growing climate as well. So we have an early bud break, sometimes late February, and we can go frost free until, you know, commonly until um, Thanksgiving or so. So that opens up, Syrah is really successful here. Um, Grenache is marginal, like I have to plant it in the right spot, but it's beautiful when it's grown in the right spot. And, uh, and so that, that is a whole different palette of, of wine style that we have been moving into as well. It seems like as time's gone on, we're dealing with frost protection a lot less. So we, yeah, I think that, I think there is a shift in, in what we're experiencing here. That's good and bad. We, we definitely need the vines to go dormant in the winter or else we have similar problems where the, the vines just don't come out of dormancy all at once or you have vines that don't go dormant at all. And that really affects fruitfulness and um, is, is not ideal for the vines. Pretty good conditions all through the summer. That, that said, um, we were running about three weeks behind our normal um, pattern here. And that's real specific to here in the Edna Valley. I think sure. elsewhere was a little bit advanced, in fact. That's exactly <laughs> what I've heard, yeah. Yeah, so we, but then we did have challenges with a real intense heat spell. Um, around Labor Day, 109 degrees here. That's unheard of, uh, really smoked down a lot of stuff. There were a lot of wineries trying to make a decision, do we pick before that heat? Because we could see it coming and we just weren't there for the most part. We were measuring 19 to 20 bricks. Um, we were showing really green seeds and um, not ripe character in the fruit. So we did elect to just put a lot of water on to make sure the vines had what they needed. But um, yeah, that heat spell turned into four or five days of pretty intense heat. And we, um, we came through it. I think that the, the parts of the vineyard that were the furthest mature, towards maturity, they suffered the most because they just couldn't quite uh, recover. And that kind of pushed our hand and we started to pick after the heat. But we also had at that same time uh, a storm pushed up from uh, Mexico and it dumped about a third of an inch of really humid, warm um, rainfall. And that's exactly the wrong kind of rainfall yeah, for us. So. Think, yeah. And then that was followed about a week later by 
two and a third inches of rain. This is a, a northern storm and that was colder, but it still, it was like three days that we couldn't really get into the vineyard. So we, we definitely had challenges, had some fruit raisin, had some interesting fungal <laughs> pressure out there on the, the Chenin Blanc especially. But, um, but overall, I think the wines are turning out nicely. Yeah, we make a pretty big commitment to be out there weekly with um, myself and Kevin, my other winemaker. And, um, and that's just to kind of stay connected to what's happening on a week by week basis. Um, there's, I think that there, that part of the business and being in the cellar are both really important and, um, interacting with the crew and just seeing how you building some site knowledge of what, um, what part of the vineyard is advanced over the other, um, how we're going to break up the blocks into sub blocks each year. Well, we have 150 acres in the Edna Valley in three different parcels, and about half of that is in development or in production. So we have about 80 acres of vineyard. Part of our business is also hosting some other wineries. And so we, we kind of nurture some other, some of our competition perhaps, but I think, um, I think there's room for everyone. Honestly, like we are, um, we're making the wines that we can make from our estate, and that's our story. is is this property and how it um, how it translates into the glass, and other people have their stories. Whether it's a vineyard based, some of them are more stylistically based than what we might be, and um, you know we are we're in distribution nationwide, maybe 22, 23 states. So that's different than a lot of other wineries that may be here, mostly just for the tourists who come through this area or for their local membership. So we, we do kind of a, a mix of both. And, and that's important to us, I think, to, to have a presence elsewhere as well. Well, I was with um, a friend of mine from Minnesota yesterday, and she was talking about how she had gone to Total Wine and um, was looking for a Chardonnay and they loaded her up with some some things that were very buttery so that like there's this this theme or style out there in, in Chardonnay right now I think Chardonnay is difficult because it, it's the most popular white wine um, variety sure. um, but it's you know its roots in Burgundy are quite different than what we have seen you know in, as the as a kind of California style of it so there's a range of things you can do with with Chardonnay um, as I feel like my job here is to translate this property, and I think that our property has a lot to say with, in, in, with Chardonnay. It's um, very high in natural acidity. It's, um, I am careful not to throw so much oak at it that it um, overshadows the fruit itself. So we're fairly lightly oaked, but I have, um, with that acidity, I have to bring some richness to the wine or it is not gonna be balanced. So we're a full malolactic um, Chardonnay. We always conduct a full malolactic fermentation. We still end up with wines that are, you know, quite bright and really structured to age really nicely. We, um, in oak, I've changed oak quite a bit from what I've done elsewhere in my career. So I'm not usually using oak that's very sweet toned, but rather long stave aging um, and pretty lightly and delicately toasted barrels. So I get more kind of nuance of hard spice and um, maybe cardamom more so than vanilla and caramel and kind of those more sweet tones. And that's a better fit for our Chardonnay, which loves to show kind of citrus, Meyer lemon, or if they get really ripe, maybe tangerine kind of uh, flavor tones. Um, and the, the wines are great to age and they're great to, um, they're great to have with food because of that. But they're not low alcohol either. I mean, the, the Edna Valley wants to be pretty generous. So I'm usually ending up with Chardonnay between 14 and 14 and a half percent alcohol. And they're pretty happy there. Um, pretty balanced there, I think too. Alcohol brings sweetness to the palate and it brings kind of force to the wine. And for those reasons, like, uh, uh, wines that get high in alcohol are delicious sometimes it just has to be not done at the expense of um, acidity or you know or the the balance and structure of the wine we're bottling generally um 
one to two Chardonnays in a per vintage. And so the, the styles that we do, the center of effort is our kind of flagship wine. And so that is primarily uh, fermented and aged in French oak. About um, We're at about 20 to 25% new barrels and generally those kind of lighter toasted delicate barrels. Um, a portion of the wine, about usually 10 to 20% is fermented in concrete vessels. We found that they're exceptional for helping to build richness and fullness into the wine without throwing any kind of oak flavor over the top. And stainless has not been real successful because for our wines, they need some oxygen to help them develop or they just stay very tight and austere. Uh, and then the last little seasoning spice we use from time to time is um, acacia wood. Acacia barrels, they, um, they bring something really different as well, kind of um, they can run a range from kind of a wet willow, kind of a broken twig, kind of freshness. And as the as the barrels age, they're aroma active for a lot longer than French oak. And they kind of move into tones of um, like fenugreek is a spice that almost smells like, it smells like maple syrup a little bit. Like I think that they, uh, they use it in Middle Eastern cooking and some other things, but it kind of moves into that direction as well. Yeah, it's really easy. It's coewine.com. So center of effort wine.com.